Hello, my name is Critter Bear. Today what I'm going to be doing is showing you how I personally paint and put together miniatures, what tools I use, what miniatures I buy, and so on and so forth. There are many, many different ways to do this, but this is the way that I do it personally. If you want to look up another way, go for it. My way is not perfect by all means. I have no sort of artist background in painting or anything. I just kind of do what comes naturally, and I've had a little bit of help here and there, but I haven't done any real research on this sort of thing. Go ahead and leave a comment if you have a better way to do it, to let people know about it, but uh, this is the way that I do it. These are the miniatures that I choose. So, first and foremost, the miniatures that I will be using today are what are called Reaper miniatures. I have a D&D campaign that I'm running, and I have a couple characters that I want to put into it. These are NPC characters. This is Pathfinder Miniatures from Reaper.com. They have really the most wide variety of miniatures comparatively to other miniature websites, and they're the cheapest as far as I know. They have metal ones that look like this, which are really good and detailed, but they're a little bit more expensive than these guys over here, which are plastic, which is also good, but a little less detailed, a little less good, but they are much cheaper which is nice. I'm going to show you how to put together these miniatures and how to prime them and then choose a base and paint them and go over paint brushes and stuff. There's also like Lord of the Rings miniatures which is like Games Workshop miniatures that I uh, have purchased before because I'm a big fan of Lord of the Rings stuff. This guy's a banner person that I need to put the flag back on. They're also relatively cheap as well whenever it comes to the Lord of the Rings stuff. There's also Dark Sword miniatures which I have only one of really because they're a little bit more expensive but if you can find something that you really like there it's really well made and well sculpted miniature so that's really good so those are the miniatures that I buy as far as Reaper miniatures go I do really really enjoy the Pathfinder miniature line because I, I'm not sure who the sculptor is but they do have their name listed on the Reaper miniature website and everything that they make just looks fantastic it's very detailed and very intricate and just very good character design in general because they're made off of a game itself with characters in mind. But without further ado, we'll go ahead and open the package. We'll be working on both of them today so that I can show you how they kind of differ in building and everything like that. As you can see, this one comes as one piece. All of it's put together already. Sometimes you have to put it together yourself and it comes with a base that you can go ahead and put it on, but I prefer the round bases myself, so I won't be using this base today. Huh. As you can see, this one here is plastic, and this one, as you can also see, the sword is just a little bit bent, and I'm kind of a stickler for things like swords and everything being completely straight as they possibly can be because it makes it look less like a toy, more like an actual model or something important. So I'll be showing you how to straighten that. With metal miniatures, as you can see, it is literally like it's slightly bent. I take my fingers and just go with the metal. Yes. And now it is completely straight. That's all it takes, which is also a really nice thing about the metal miniatures as compared to the plastic ones. Alright, so first off, the thing that you want to know with miniatures is they do have what is called mold lines, and also little places where the mold actually took place. And that is shown right here with this little guy. That doesn't belong on the miniature, that's where it was molded. And what you can honestly do is you can just use your finger and just bend it back and forth a little bit and eventually it'll just snap off. But if that doesn't work, and if you want to do it faster, I use a pair of like little clippers here. You can honestly get these at any hardware store or this is I think like fingernail clippers or something. And you can just clip the excess off of there as best as you can. There we go. And now that little tag is gone. And now the miniature looks pretty good from there. He's got a little tag on his on his hand here. There we go. Now that's gone. Now the model looks a little bit more impressive. It looks a lot less like a toy now. But also there's the mold line, which there is a little line going across the head uh, all the way down where the mold was separated from. And actually Reaper miniatures and Pathfinder miniatures actually don't have impressive mold lines on there. They act well. 
I should say, not very noticeable mold lines on there. So you don't have to worry about that too much with this line of products, but like the Lord of the Rings miniatures and everything that's a little more cheaply made, you do have to worry about it some. So what you do with the mold line is you you take a razor or something sharp really, you could have a knife or anything. Uh, some people use very small razors and you go up to that mold line and you just shave it away. And I'll speed this up to save some time. And this isn't actually very necessary on the Reaper miniature, because as I said, the mold line really doesn't show up that much. And even the primer that we'll be putting it on later might cover it up. I'm just going over some of the flat spots on his shoulders that uh, might show up just a little bit more comparatively. You just shave off that excess and it'll flatten it right down. There's the slightest little metal tag down here. I'm just gonna cut that off. And there's a little bit of a mold line down here on the edge of his skirt. Otherwise, I think that's pretty good. We'll look at the plastic one as well. The plastic one actually looks pretty good as is. We don't really have to worry about this one so much. This mold actually came out really well. So there really is not much mold lines to it. There's still the faintest of mold lines, but I'm not that much of a stickler to try and take care of that. As I said before, the next thing is sometimes the models have pieces that need to be glued together as they come unassembled. With metal, it's a little more difficult than plastic, and sometimes with the way that it's shaped, is it perfect? It doesn't come out to where the pieces fit together super well, and I don't really have any examples today of how to glue something together. The miniature glue comes in something a little like this. It'll always kind of look the same. It'll always come in some sort of bottle like this and it just works really well to not show up anything it comes out very clear and it doesn't bog up some of the details like if you put too much glue on it might like fill in the gaps where the details need to be but this one does this kind of glue doesn't do it as much as others so this is why you want to use kind of miniatures glue instead of any sort of other glue that you might find in other places this is what I know there might be some other really cheap good glue out there that I don't know about please let me know about it or other people who are watching it this is just a video for my friends and stuff so don't take it too seriously with plastic miniatures the pieces kind of glue together pretty fast no problem uh, you glue into one of the little corners you put the part where it needs to go and it glues together pretty easily metal miniatures on the other hand not so much it takes a little bit more effort because you'll be sitting there for like 30 minutes before the glue actually ends up drying on the piece and you're just having to hold it in place and try and stay as still as possible so that it can bond correctly because it doesn't work as well but what I do because I actually work with LARP weapons and have this on hand I actually use DAP Wellwood Contact Cement I use just the original stuff but this is a contact adhesive you dab the piece of the miniature that you want to glue on and the place where you want to glue it on to and you wait for about maybe five minutes or so for it to get tacky and then put them together and it glues together just fine. What you do after that is you use this glue over the dab and it glues together and it's holding together just fine for all of my miniatures and everything and it makes the process a whole lot easier, a whole lot faster the dap fills in any gaps that needs to where the mold didn't fit into the socket perfectly together. That's the easiest way for me, and a lot of miniatures do come in pieces, but Reaper miniatures, not a lot unless it's a bigger miniature. So, once again, I like Reaper miniatures the most, especially since they are actually located within Dallas, Texas, and I live in Houston, Texas, so I live actually pretty close to go and get some if I need to, or if I need them to ship them to me. It doesn't take that long to get to my house.